Welcome to the MTD CNC Emo podcast. We're helping to guide you to find your solutions providers throughout Emo from the 18th to the 23rd of September. I'm really excited about the event. Now, of course, during the event, there's going to be webinars, there's forums, panel discussions happening throughout in different languages. There's loads going on and loads for you to see. However, we're here talking about different solutions that's happening to guide you and help you make the best use of your time. So I am joined by Paul Jones. Good morning. Colin Griffiths and Tom Scabala. Good morning. Hello. And we're going to be talking about different companies providing different products to the manufacturing industry. But first, I've got a quiz for all of you watchers and listeners. So guess how many exhibitors are exhibiting at EMO? 750. Higher. You said it. Sorry, yeah, yeah. 750. (laughs) (laughs) Is it in... The thousands. Oh, yes. you can't it's 1500. Say, Tom, more. Is it 1800? You're close. We're, we're not going to go through every single one. 1813 people are exhibiting. And the reason I'm saying that is there's so many different companies, and we're talking about a few that are just up there with some of the best and latest technology. So let's get excited about these companies. Um, also, how many halls are you going to be walking around? What he's going to be walking around lots. One, that. <laughs> there's, there's loads. I don't know. Was that yeah, seventeen? Well, I don't think there's seventeen halls, or maybe there is, but I know there's the, the numerical term is seventeen. But um, not sure. anyone else? I think it's eight. I know. Yeah, seventeen halls definitely because that's Higher. what I think. Is it? Is it? Twenty-two. Twenty-seven halls. Oh, look at you. Twenty-seven wow. halls. All right, you're being so smart. I'm oh, going to ask you a couple of things that specialize, specializing in, in terms of what they're focusing on. Emo twenty twenty-three. No, let's talk about some of the companies we're going to Oh, be you don't know. About. It's um, sustainability yes. and digitization, did you know? Easy yes. for me to say, all the S's and Z's. Yes. Anyway, moving on swiftly. Just sustainability you know. and digitization. Right, okay. One of the first companies that I want to discuss is Heimbuck. Now, Heimbuck provide over 8,000 products to industry. So anything work holding, you can certainly count on this company. With a strap line, no matter which industry or machining, we can find the perfect solution for your work piece Clamping. So what is exciting about their stand at Emo then? Well, you've just said it. You look at Heimbuck as a work holding company, but at Emo, they're going to change that because they are actually, they want to be known now as a full range supplier from changeover, clamping, measurement and automation. And I didn't know you could do measurements in a chuck system until I read about this. So that's if you if you're having problems in your shop where you're machining something, then you've got to take it off to measure it and then put it back on, then Handbook might have an answer for you. But then also they are bringing their what, quick, measurement in process. You're talking yeah, about in, in process, tra- in tra- yeah. So you can measure the temperature of the the temperature, um, how much it's flexed, and not just on the OD, on the ID as well. This might I'm gonna this might sound like a stupid question. I'm gonna ask anyway. You're talking because we see it a lot in milling machines. This is for turning machines. Yes. Right. And they're also bringing their quick changeover system, the Centrotex. I hope I got that right. Easy I'm sorry if I didn't. I'm for, which is, um, it's great because it's, it's zero point with a repeatability of two microns. And it's, they, they say you can change over in under two minutes. Now, you think changing a chuck normally, you're probably looking at, for somebody who does it every day, you're probably looking at half an hour. For somebody who never does it, you could be looking over an hour. So, so I pulled about three hours in. <laughs> but you, you just think the time saving there, especially if you're a little job shop who, who goes from um, small parts to large parts. Yes, it's 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 an investment, and it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be an investment for a job shop. But you're gonna get that back in. They, they call it their no adaptations, don't they? So yeah. you can go from a you know, uh, you can go from a milling machine to a turning machine. You can take the work holding off and put it onto the. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the name of the, the the terminology of the product, but it's if you're looking to go from part to part quickly or operation to operation quickly, you can change from a mandrel to a collet to a chuck. Just like but that. But you've just said it there. And it's automated as And well. you've just said it there. Because it's quick point as well, if you're doing, say you don't have a five axis or a sliding head and you've got a lathe and a mill and you need to turn something but then it wants a hole drilling or flats, you can actually have the same, um, you can take the whole chuck off with the workpiece in, sit that on your milling machine yep. 
mm. and machine it so it's never come out the truck. Mm. So that could be a, that could be a real it's, game changer. It's speed. Companies that have a need to really go from process to process, but are using different work holding technologies to support those parts should and could combine everything into one solution. But it's not just about they? speed, though, is it? It's about repeatability and accuracy. Repeatability and and accuracy. they've even come up with something else. Uh, with a, They've actually got a trolley system as well. So for anyone who's changed a chuck, they are not the lightest of things. It's usually a two-man is job. Is that where you get your muscles from? Exactly. That's why I've got guns like this. I'm I'm the sure available. <laughs> Can I, just, I just want to interject very quickly. I know this is podcast audio, but we're doing video. When people highlight things on their notes... They highlight one or two items. Basically, you highlight the whole page there. Yeah, because it's... The highlight system works. Yeah, because it's, it's, Sorry, all, totally it's all so interesting. <laughs> but they've actually got a trolley now so with a with a hoist on. So you can change chucks on your own by one person. And as well as you taking the chuck off, you can actually store it in the trolley. So it keeps it clean it, it, and you don't have to just... Because we... Every, There's an we've automated all be, way of doing that yeah, as well. Yeah, and I you can automate sure. it. But let's be honest. We've all been into a shop where you've seen chucks With sat on pallets. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just sat on the floor, getting covered in swarve, coolant. So they, you keep it in the trolley, you keep it clean, there the longer go. it's going to last. It's not so the sort of much. trolley you're thinking about, Colin. No. Talking about shops and trolleys. I don't, I've never been this. I, he's I off down shopping. shopping. <laughs> don't. Oh, right, okay. Wheeling people around in the trolley if you've had a few beers. That's a different story. <laughs> anyway, moving on. You've had your four minutes of fame, Tom. So <laughs> measurability, changeovers, and work holding. Yes, and... Um, that read all your highlights again. We'll be here all day, mate. <laughs> so the next one is Diatool. Now, this is a provider of precision tools and the focus on reaming. A company with over 35 years of experience in the manufacture and repair of multi-bladed reamers uh, and state-of-the-art processing technologies. What excitement have they got on their stand? They've got lots of things, but I think you've covered it all there. So thank you very much. Sorry. Absolutely <laughs> not. No, reaming. So it's... All about, well, I can say it's all about, it's not all about, but big batch runs first of all. So your industry's great example is your automotive. So you're doing lots and lots of manufacturing there in terms of bores. So, you know, half a million plus, they need some quality, quality tooling for that type of things. But it's not just about that. It's about having, because you're thinking boring, it's quite, it can be quite a slow process, but their tooling is set up to do it super fast and super accurate. So you're talking five micron repeatability here. So some really great components, obviously making in-house. We've got some fantastic machines in their facility in Germany. So that's one thing, but it's not just big batch runs. They've got the skill sets there, so you can get custom builds to do it if you've got specific smaller batch runs. So that's part of what they're doing in terms of your rooming. A whole different, you're gonna, go on. You don't I've need to put your hand up. I don't know what they've got, on, what they got on their stand, do you know? They will have a number of different types of products. So they've got, let me get this right, the monoblock reamers, so they're, they're the all in one pieces. They've then got the reaming heads where you're interchangeable. But part of their product suite is actually an expandable reamer. So what you're doing is, you're gonna be getting your tool wear and things like that. So rather than have it sent it back to be reground, you can actually, um, it's expandable, so you don't need to do that. So you can keep that machine tool running and getting that those big production runs throughout the process. So That's it's what great, you see great from tooling there. manufacturers these days. They're trying to provide not one product that fits all, but a product that does as much as possible without either changeover or repurchase. And it sounds to me like this is a, a company that can be considered for that full reaming. So and I think I think as well they're looking at. I read a bit into data tool, and they're looking at sustainability as well because obviously. With reamers, and any machinist will tell you, reaming is the worst part of any process because you put, you could spend weeks, uh, hours, weeks in a job, and then you put a, you have to ream it, and if it if the reamer cuts big, scrap. You put the old plug gauge in and you go, oh no, exactly. It's it is, it honestly, reaming yeah. used to be. Gosh. I used to. It was the worst thing I ever did. But once a reamer's worn, it goes in the bin, and you buy a new one. But with Diatol, you don't. You can actually send it back. They will re-tip it, re-sharpen it, and send it you back. So you, they're looking on waste of material as well. So you're not just you're not just binning it. You're just having it. So, and they probably have a contract with you doing that. And then in turn, there's sustainability. Sustainability, but then the price point's different because you're not investing in a brand new one. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I was looking at their um, and Colin, please correct me if I'm wrong. Is it called a ring reamer? It is a ring reamer, absolutely. Um, the sizes of these things are ridiculous. Now, the biggest thing I ever reamed was 35 mil. 
Now, these ring reamers start at 50.6, and they go up to 205,599 millimeters. Wow. Okay. What is even that big to ream? You've got to rely on the machine spindle oh, as well. You, to, you've you got, know, you're to going to have to have a, you've a, got to rely a powerful on machine to get that through. Yeah, yeah. And another thing as well is, um, in terms of, bo rather than using a boring bar, you can use it, they're reamers as well. And what you can do is you don't need to do test cuts. So these, these reamers are super accurate. So super so you're saving any material. And you're saving time then. Because yeah. if, you, if you've got to do a test cut to get your boring bar set, that's one, two, three attempts to get that set. If you can just put that down first time, Yep. So that, you say as well as saving money you're saving time absolutely so there you go I'm going to summarise that diet tool get yourself over there if you've got any super accurate high speed reaming requirements that's it in a nutshell and custom ones and big batches perfect thanks Colin <laughs> next up is Bannock now I think it'd be fair to say that they're probably one of the largest or most well known names in the manufacturing sector obviously for software, but for automation and machines. They're huge. So, so how did they, as a big, a global brand, decide what to put on their stand? It must be so difficult, mustn't it? But, I mean, you look at their stand at the show, 1,444 metres squared. I mean, it's massive. And you won't miss it because it will be bright yellow. Yellow. You know? <laughs> and, and everybody will be wearing yellow. The kit is yellow. Of course, some of their collaborative products are, are green now or white, in fact. But yeah, they will be, how do they distinguish what to put on their stand? I think they look at a theme and really it's automation. It's, it's digitization or digitalization. Um, and they have so much to offer in this. Area. I mean, if you go to, a, I mean, you always go to a FANUC stand worth going because they're fun. You know, you, I'm not just talking about the technology. There'll be, there'll be your table football. There'll be a robot that's picking up a car. There'll a be beer. The, 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 there'll be a beer. Yeah, they, they often dispensing have beer, a beer. Don't they? Yeah. It's the kind of stand you go to to learn where the advancements in manufacturing are coming from and where, and where things are going. But at the same time, with a kind of a little bit of a light-hearted approach to it as well, which I think attracts people from all sides. Now, of course, they will have their injection molding machinery there they'll have their edm solutions they'll have their robo the robo drills and of course they'll have all of their industrial robots um they'll have their their collaborative robots um they'll have their control i think there's a new control system or some new software as there always is evolving i mean fanuc you've got to remember when you go on a fanuc stand as i said 1444 meters squares it will be huge there'll be so much on there to see but wherever you go in the exhibition you are going to be seeing Products supported awesome. by Fanuc, so it will. There will be. It won't just be about what's on that stand. It will be the fact that this is rolled out around the show. So I think even automated vehicle solutions. Um, yeah, the collaborative robots working in conjunction with their machine tools. There is always a lot, a lot to see on a Fanuc stand. It'll be well laid out. There'll be plenty of space, and and it will be yeah. A an very one. basic question I'm going to put to you: What will the robot arm be lifting? Because before I've seen big engine blocks. Well, I it had a Corvette last time. I, we saw. It, yeah, well, it was. I think it was the. Yeah, it wasn't a car. I couldn't recall the car, but yeah, it was the the world's strongest robot was picking up a vehicle and just moving it around like you know, and th and this is I think. We'll talk about some of the machine tool suppliers and how much they put into the installation of their kit there and the themes at the show. But Fanet will be very much about educating people how technology is evolving, how you can work with automation, how easy automation is to use. Um, there'll be lots to see. And there you have it, Fanet, not to be missed. Next up, we have LNS, a one-stop shop for machine tool peripherals. And in 2023, they are celebrating, I hope there's going to be cake on the stand, uh, 50 years of activity. You're looking at me, Lindsay. I am. I cannot guarantee cake, unfortunately. I know Paul's, oh. that's going to disappoint Paul. But LNS, you say peripherals, <laughs> like we practiced that before the show, because that was a hard one to say. <laughs> one end of the machine, all the way through to the other end of the machine. That's it in a nutshell. Can I... Does that sound fair to you? Perfect. Okay, so I say that we're looking at your bar loader. So they've got the quick load servo 105. What does that mean to you? Or am I going to have to answer that? Quick load. Absolutely. It's fast. So you're load, loading the bar. And I'm going to put Paul to the test because a lot of people, you know, I want to get four meter bar, five meter bar. Why would you go at a short bar? I think there's a, and when there's I say a short few, bar, I don't a, mean having a drink. I think, I think there's a few reasons. The, the short bar magazines are really popular because they're, they're lower cost. They also fit into a smaller area. 
Um, they're probably the, the the two main reasons that I would would think of. Uh, a longer bar magazine, which I'm sure you'll come on to, uh, you're gonna it, it, it's gonna be better for your longer runs because you can put more bar in it, but it will take up more space and cost you a bit more money. And I'm sure there's other points that you'll you'll. Touch well, my on. key point is, but they do both, I assume. They, they? do both. But I'm yeah. not going to go into long bar. I'm going to keep on the short bar straightness because obviously long bar you're going to get much more error in that in that length, and it can ultimately damage damage a machine tool tool life and things like that and you're not going to get such good tolerances so your shorter bar is good for that side of things and this machine is it looks absolutely fantastic and it's got a hmi and you know what that is don't you no yeah. okay brilliant human machine interface so they thought about yeah some of these machine shops will go to are oh, down and dirty but that's the nature of their trade but a lot of engineers nice nice and pristine this this machine looks absolutely fantastic the hmi so easy to use and if things go wrong qr code You've got your problem solved there. Nice and simple. I'm going to move on because I'm aware that I'm taking up time and I'm well, limited. I think it's the important thing that you mentioned there is um, you, you're talking about a provider that can feed a machine and also take part out of the machine. And those two things often, if they're bought from a different supplier, might not be as good as buying everything from one. So you've got the kind of the machine sitting in the middle and then you've got everything around it, which, which, which feeds it, which ejects it, swarf comes out of it supplied by one supplier so it's um you know it's a good opportunity Absolutely. to see everything around the machine and, and not also and also their latest developments and see you know people's requirements and needs for different part sizes changes and they're going to be involved in that listening to customers so maybe what you heard and or you thought was a way that they did it before they well, might you, be changing well, it. well you have to think it's an important point because as we talk a lot of machine tools are going towards becoming more flexible and handling different sizes of bar changing from job to job quickly. Now, if you're let down by either where, say, the swarf or the part comes out or where the bar goes in, what's the point in having the advantages on the machine if you haven't got them supported around it? So I'm assuming, I'm sure that LNS are continually working on ways to make their product more flexible, like you've said with the HMI, to make it more uh, operator-friendly, um, all things to Quick be Quick changeover as well with that bar. So yeah, again flexibility and then go out the other end so your chip conveyor they've thought about that as well so it's not just about getting that swarf out it's about the filtration of your coolant for example mm. so engineer's favorite job i know did you enjoy doing the tank clean outs no <laughs> so take go. time to think about that tom did you enjoy doing tank clean absolutely dreadful job we won't ask paul if he enjoyed that job but that's part of what they do so less tank clean outs and cleaning the chip conveyor Simple things, I've like got consumable, so it's nice and simple. And then they're filtering that coolant, so you're getting better life well, with the coolant itself. You also wouldn't money. know a swarf conveyor, how many different types of swarf conveyor. I remember when I used to sell machines, it was like, do you want a slap? Do you want a hinge? I can't even remember the terminology. Now, but the corkscrew. Yeah, there's so, many different, there's so many different methods of extracting the swarf, and that depends on the type of swarf you're producing, how it, how it comes out, stringy, chips, and all the rest of it. So, you know, it's not quite as simple as just going, I'll have a swarf conveyor. But what you've got to think is as well, which LNS have been doing is with swarf conveyors, if you get um, swarf or fines in your coolant, don't forget when you're doing your next part, that's coming back out the coolant. So if you're trying to get a nice finish and you've got tiny bits of swarf in your coolant, it's going to be hitting your part. So you're not going to get nice finishes, tolerances. It could scrap your part. So if you've got a conveyor that will keep all the the rubbish out your coolant and filter your coolant, your coolant's going to last longer, which is going to save you money. You're not going to scrap parts because of defects or um, blemishes, save you money. So something people don't, and I think it's sometimes, sometimes people don't really think about each end of the machine. They only think about what's in the middle, Just like you said. I've got a question there quickly. You said swarf or fines? So fines in your coolant is, is like very small. very, very small bits of swarf, which... Yeah. We'll get through the cool um, pump. Filtration Not on this machine because 500 or 140 microns. There you go. How's that? There you go. Beautiful. So machine tool peripherals. Make sure you're heading to the LNS stand. Next up, let's discuss Akuma. So Akuma is one of the largest machine tool providers in the world and they're celebrating again. Um, so there's lots of celebrations happening at Emo. However, they have been in the industry and making machines for 125 years. It's quite a long time. Yeah, I mean, three world premieres, uh, four European premieres. So there's going to be a lot of new technologies there. I know one of their big focus uh, points is their OSP P500 software or control, um, which will actually be equipped 
or will have on the machine a digital twin, which is what everybody's talking these days about digital twin and the fact that if you have a digital twin, you're enabled, you're able to be able to verify the machining of a part. So you're going to minimize the opportunity to have accidents. You're going to ensure your part comes off right first time. So incorporating this type of feature into a control system is going to be very advantageous. Can I ask what might be a stupid question? Mm. Isn't that just cam? Well, it, 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 having they will have this on their own on their own software. Yeah. So, so essentially, it, it is cam, but some cam doesn't offer verification. You have to go to a verification software in order to have that. So, I mean, there are a lot of cam solutions that do have both, but often you might have to have a cam solution verification software, you know, into the machine, and you've got kind of th almost three factors there. Whereas. Um, Using something like this, I, I assume, I don't know until I've seen it, but this is one of their big pushes now um, to have that. Also, one of the big focuses will be um, the the economics of a machine, the green side of things. I sustainability. Know, sustainability, yeah, which is a feature, in fact, a, a few of the ones oh, we're talking about Paul, today. the last three machine shops that I've been to have all recently invested in solar panels, all of them. Well, with, yeah. uh, and that's really important, but I think the machine tool... Um, manufacturers are kind of in a in a in a race really yeah. here they're in a race in order to make their machine more efficient than the competition so we're seeing the theme here at emo is if you're a visitor to the show there's going to be lots of machine tool suppliers there and you're going to be able to go on and see the ways they can reduce the cost of your energy bill and you know i mean i look at some of the technology with akuma they call their their genos five axis machine an entry level machine it, you know it, it is an entry level. It, it's a very high performing um, five axis machine. But around the world, Akuma sell thousands of machines a year. They're up there in the probably in the top five of machine tool manufacturers and sellers. They'll sell turning centers, machining centers, vertical lathes, you know, multitasking machines. They have a solution pretty much for most manufacturing requirements all built to a certain Japanese standard as Wait. well. And in fact, they do. Sorry, Lindsay, I'm sure you're going to ask. Yeah. But I'm just going to say they also um, importantly make all their own drives, encoders, and vir virtually every component on the machine. So it's kind of... Let's let's go down to some of the technology then. Um, you went to IMTS, the Armroid yeah. and the Standroid. Oh, yes. I forgot about these. I mean, yeah, you're talking integrated automation in very, very small footprints. The Armroid literally sits and is... Is, is part of the machine and it's an arm that goes into the machine takes puts the part in and takes the finished part out i think the the clever or the the good thing about it is it, it is one cell so what you're not doing is adding automation to a machine you are buying a, ma a machine with an armroid on it which is just one control panel it's sorry, one it's control it's armroid in the actual working it, envelope. It's kind of just outside, but it but it sits very neatly like on it. Yes, it's, it's almost just, if you're operating on one side, it's just to the other side of the window and it yeah. just kind of sticks out ever so slightly. It, it, do, it does. It's so it's subtle. probably in a, in, a, in a footprint similar to what some machines might be where you don't have the automation. Mm -hmm. But also because the interface um, is, or, or the control system controls both the, the robot and the machine it means you know you're not having to worry about programming via two different portals you're doing it all in one place and if you're a manufacturer that you know just wants to load and unload small parts perfect and the standroid is a very very similar solution these two machines which you're right we, we saw at um, IMTS and have seen it plenty of places just show the attention to detail they're putting on automation and keeping the unmanned run going as well as offering the okay, machines that so they've got. Lots to see on the Akuma stand. I'm sure Paul could have continued a lot more there, so um, it's worth visiting. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about Goering. Now, Goering is a turnkey solution provider for tooling solutions. I don't think there's a tool that they don't produce. Am I correct? Yes, they do everything. They essentially are your one-stop shop for everything. So a lot of companies will get high feeds from one place, end mills from another, drills from another, but Goering do it all. So what would be the benefit of going to one person? Well, essentially, you know where it's all coming from for a start. You would get a, a good connection with your rep. So if, they're, if you're having trouble, you're only dealing with one person. You're not dealing with multiples and it, it's just going to be a lot easier. But as well as like Goering do something for everybody and I was blown away to find out that what do you think is the smallest cutter you can get with through coolant? 
I feel like I know the answer already. It's I was listening to your prep, so I'm not going to answer it. With throw coolant. With so it's got to be super coolant. small. Point two of a mil. Oh, Which is just ridiculous. You didn't give us a chance to answer that question. No, because you oh. wouldn't have got it anyway. <laughs> um, but Gurin have something for everything, and they are quite focused on medical. So medical parts are either made from um, your metals or your plastics. The problem with your plastics is coolant can seep into it. So you've got to find a way around that, and Gurin have. So they now machine everything dry. But then there's a problem with machining dry. I've had it. You get your end mill clogged up. There's a big bang and everybody looks over like meerkats and you think, I've done it again. So they have come up with a new tool angle. They've also come up with um, new coatings to stop this. So they've even thought of problems like that. And then um, at A and B, they were showing um, two parts. Um, well, it was the same part, but... After it had all been roughed out, and then after it had all been finished, to show they have a tooling for everything, and it's it's just great. And I don't I don't know why people don't use one over others. Why do you think that is so? Is it? I mean, products got to be right, hasn't it? Which I'm sure you say you, you wouldn't just buy everything from one supplier if somebody had a favourable product. There's, it's got to, you, you. And without trying to upset anyone, there is there is companies out there who are better at one than the other. You get some companies whose high feeds are amazing, but then the carbide's not so great, and then vice versa. But with Gurin, they are quite unique that they still produce their own carbide for their own end mills. That's quite unique these days because it, it's it's owned by a very, very big company. You get other companies get the bits out of it. So, so turning, yeah, milling, all of those applications. Everything. Um, and they also do... Um, long drills up to gun drilling. So we've talked about gun drilling before. It's quite a specific process. Usually you have to go to a specific supplier for a gun drill. No, go and do it all. I've got a quick, quick question for you, Tom. 0.2 mil tool through coolant. What application would you use that on? Don't just say a small one. <laughs> so I'll put you on the spot there. Um, I just, I was med there. Medical, really, because um, knee joint, shoulders, if they need really tiny holes in. For, to get rid of pressure. I wonder what kind of pressure you could get through that. Well, um, talking, of, talking of the pressure through it is, please correct me if I'm wrong, Gurin, but um, there, there was something I read where you can't actually start the coolant in the tool until it's inside the material because the coolant pressure would shatter the tool. Oh, because gotcha. it's so oh, small wow. with the coolant holes in, you have to essentially pre-drill it enough to get your tool in, then you can start your coolant because then the hole keeps it all in. Makes sense. But just before I finish, I'm really sorry. They are bringing out a new revolutionary drilling tool. And that is very... Tell us more about it. <laughs> exactly. I don't know anything about there it. There you have it. But it's it's going to be brilliant and I can't wait to see it. Well, it'll have to be revolutionary. It's got to go around, hasn't it? Well, oh, goodness. Come on, guys. That's a good one. <laughs> and the, the problem but, is he's here all day. Oh, no. I oh, know. Uh, there you have it. So if you're looking for the latest kind of uh, research and development on tooling, revolutionary products, your one-stop shop, you've got the going stand to visit. Next up, we're going to discuss... Hanwha. Now, Hanwha is one of the world's leading manufacturers of sliding head lathes. Um, in fact, um, it was one of the top three in the top three in 2019. So a huge uh, contender for the sliding head industry. You're looking at me, Lindsay, like I, I know am. all about sliding. I love a sliding head. Absolutely. But I'm going to ask Tom, would you use sliding heads just for big batch runs? No, no, you can use them for... Um, That's all I need. Just oh, now, sorry, now okay. go on. You go. You go. No, with, with how quick and easy they are to change over now and with um, programming capabilities on the machine, as well as cam systems, you can use them for anything now. Another question for you, because I'm, well, I'm going to keep you on your toes. When you say changeover, what are you changing? So changing over from one part to another. I know that, but you're changing the guide bush, non-guide guide bush. Guide bush, tooling. It's just so easy. Okay. So what they're showcasing at the show is the XV2026. So make your own assumption on what size bar that take. Probably 26 mil, I would Good, imagine. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, Maybe these, you might be able to squeeze a bit more. I don't know. They do. You say 26 mil, but let's be honest, you can usually take the guy bush out and get that little oh, bit okay. extra. And how long would it take you to change a guy bush, Tom? 
I don't know because I've never done it. Okay, uh, you, Paul? Uh, about 15 minutes, probably. Good. I won't ask you, Lynn. Or either Five minutes. Oh, okay, there you go. So, <laughs> very, very quick and simple. Change those guide bushes over, which is what you want. If you change it between applications, you've got that big bar. Keep, you want to keep those machines running. As we say, keep those spindles turning. But also, with the Hanwell range of machines, they are super powerful. So I would say, on average, machine sliding head power, I'm going to put it to you. What do you reckon, on yeah, average? But the, the, the spindle power is normally around about 7, 8 kilowatts, something like that. Absolutely. Uh, not fine. much, much bigger on a Hanwell. Up to, well, the ST range is up to, let me get this right, about 23 kilowatts. So they're going to be doing big, big cuts if required. I know you're thinking sliding head, smaller components. So their range is from three to 42 millimeter, but they can do some big cuts, some tricky, tricky materials if required. Next thing they've got is a double hinge B axis. Now a nice analogy, and I'll let you talk us through this nice analogy you had earlier. And as an example, Paul, so people can visualize. I, the the <laughs> only th the thing I can think is that your B axis on a sliding head lathe, which is really important. So I think to, for those that don't know, a B-axis on a machine will give you the ability to do, uh, you know, more operations on the component, get uh, angled features. And I think for people coming to an event like this that want to look at machinery like this, they're probably looking at one hit machining and potentially on complex parts, which is where a B-axis can help. But I believe their B-axis, what they're saying here is it, it's supported probably in two positions. Absolutely. Which means you've got a more rigid construction on that machine. That's where I would... Do you think that goes with the extra power of the machine as well then? Because obviously it's got more power, so you can take a bigger cut, you can take a heavier cut. Obviously, with a B-axis, maybe if it's just on it, one, it may start to flex. What, what, so maybe they've strengthened I'm it all. I think, no, the spindle's more... You're, the higher power there in terms of twenty twenty three. Yeah, no, but, but the driven if tooling. you've got one, if you've got one area that is very capable, what you you don't want is an area that's not exactly. You want to upgrade everything point. to make it so all it's, as you, it's as probably a very as fast point. as possible. Yeah, I, one of the things I and you might even have on your notes. One of the things I saw at the last Emo show, I'm sure there'll be several machines on on the Hamwar stand, but is there is it their STC range? STL is a, STL if you're talking range, big machines, much yep. bigger machine. Um, Again, more more powerful, but is that that I think that's into then to the fixed head market. So I think they've got that offering. Then I might be wrong; it might be sliding head, but I know it's a much bigger machine. I believe there's turrets on it, so it's a slightly. So there's there's more than just the, the sliding head on the handwar, but certainly for production. There's, there's so essentially, right. they could have a machine for for everyone if you're doing something small up to something a lot bigger. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so one hit machining and. Um, extremely powerful and larger sliding head They also have robots machines. as well, I should say that, or cobots as well, hand -wire. They've done very well um, around Europe and around the world with supply and solutions for automation with, um, you know, robots and cobots. I just too. said that because I didn't know. There you go. Did, did, did you not know? Oh, there you no, go. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, <my> God, <laughs> moving on swiftly. <laughs> the list goes on. That's hand -wire. So next up, we have got Hyman. Now, I personally visited their facility. In fact, it's a very modern production facility out in Germany. And um, they have a strap line that says Quality Wins. Um, and they're spe specialising in producing tool holding technology. And I personally would say they're a market leader in this area. And they also produce micro set presetting machines. So there's lots that they can display. Does anyone know what they've got actually on the stand? How long have you got? Oh, goodness. So, oh, goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just clarify, Tom, four minutes. Right. <laughs> so Heimer, like you said, are market leaders in tool presetting, balancing machines, um, shrink fit machines, um, and they will be bringing all of this to Emo. So, and they say they have a presetting machine for everyone. So you can have the littler version, which is all done manually, or you can have fully automatic ones, up to... A cube. So they have a forty a fully automated cube, which will automate your shrinking, your presetting, it will do everything. And you can it's got a little conveyor that brings the tools around, which you can actually make as long as you need. So you can, it will run twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week, and that is to me just for your companies like Boeing, McLaren, who are who are running day in day out as such an amazing thing now i'm going to ask paul a question because i didn't know about this until yesterday do you know what cool flash is character <laughs> right <laughs> so what or superman or something oh, like marvel or dc marvel right so movies people have um high pressure coolant on their machines some people don't 
Now, obviously, if you don't have high pressure coolant, but you still have through spindle coolant, that can cause problems with swarf because obviously the coolant's not hitting um, the swarf enough and you're not clearing the swarf. So you're recutting your own swarf, which is damaging your part, so on and so forth. So Hymer, I've got a new tool holder called the Cool Flash, which has your standard coolant holes going up to the top ring, but then it has a reservoir and they've put pinholes in and they call it the hose pipe effect. So if you've got your hose pipe and it's dribbling out, but then you cover the end and it comes out a lot faster. Ah. So they can make high pressure coolant out of a non high pressure coolant system. Is that, is that kind of measurable as well to a specific force? That would be interesting to see. They do actually have on display the tool holder with the coolant, which they will turn the pressure up and down to show you just how powerful it is. Because the problem is if you have a machine and you only have through spindle coolant, you don't have high pressure coolant, it's very difficult, and people might correct me if I'm wrong, to be able to upgrade a machine to have high yes. pressure coolant. You, well, you've got to have you can't pumps. Do it through, yeah, yeah, exactly, you, exactly. There's a lot. Depending on how the spindle's built, you yeah. may have to have new pipe work put in, which it's a very, very costly upgrade. I, I did see something from Hymer when I was at the Starag a, a Tech Days a, a few weeks ago where they had um, an automated vehicle taking tools to a tool cha a, a tool change basically taking a putting a tool taking a taking it's an easy for you to say come on now. a carbide <laughs> tool putting it into a tool um body then picking that up and then putting it into their preset machine checking the dimensions and then basically picking it up and putting it back into the tool carousel the idea behind that is of course you can basically add tools to your tool, caras tool carousel as you are in manufacturing and, and making sure. And what I was interested in is when they heat shrunk the, the, the tool, actually how they could ensure that the measurement of that tool was as accurate as it actually was. And it was fascinating. Right. So, so this comes on to oh, their... Time's up, mate. Sorry. This comes, up, this comes <laughs> on to their presetting where they can actually... Um, the, the heat shrink machine will measure the old tool or it, it will know the measurement of the old tool because it's all done with... Um, barcode scanning mm. and it, you drop the new tool in and it will automatically set it to the right height so when you put that into the machine you skip um, having to reset that yeah. tool now how just before we finish a Heimer shrink fit holder how long do you think Heimer guaranteed that holder for you ain't coming to me again are you Anyone. This can go to anyone. Lifetime. How long? Lifetime. Time. Right. They, I said it first, Lindsay. They guarantee if you use a heat shrink holder, the heat shrink machine, so their, their machines, you use all their equipment, they guarantee that holder will last as long as you need it to. It'll last a lifetime. I Unlike this right? section, which is four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no, you don't be, don't apologise. This is a company we've been to their facility. Again, I, I say this about um, a few brands, and what when they do something um, as a brand, uh, Heimer, they do it right. They're they're at the the latest advancement of technology. So if if you've got pretty much, if you have got any issues in any of those areas, it's definitely definitely worth visiting. Just before the we finish, really, really, sorry, go, really, really, on, really, sorry, just before we finish. Do you know how they guarantee your tool high <laughs> is set perfectly each time? This is a patented design um, just for Hymer where the, um, the presetter works like a camera, Iris. So as it's setting it, it focuses on the tool to make sure it's in the exact right place. I thought you were right calling place. him Iris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but it focuses like a camera does to get it all in focus so it knows it's exactly right. Should people be visiting their stand at Emo? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> will you be visiting their stand I will, at Emo? yes, and I cannot <laughs> wait. Brilliant. Well, there you have it. That's the high. I've stand. heard they've got quite a good after party as well. So, yes, okay. Nice little plug there. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> so, next up is Huachon. Now, um, Huachon is the oldest and largest South Korean machine tool manufacturer with their own foundry, uh, own machine part production, hand-finished box guideways on their machines. They're steeped in history, drilling, turling, milling. They offer a complete range of machine tools. So, what are they going to have on their stand? I think it's a it's a it's a company when when we filmed in fact at a few places Steel Fab we went um, and focused on the Huach on machines was always surprised to see the breadth of of what they offer um, at Emo we've been on their stands and they're you know they're battling it out with a with 
some of the biggest companies in the world in terms of um, the the differing technologies that they offer. Some of the points I would make is that they they have a range of um, vertical machining centers, which is which has always caught my eye, um, and it's called the Vesta machine, and it has a few things. And these are reasons people could you know should possibly visit their stand if they're looking for technologies that are a little bit different. But their Vesta VMCs have this. Um, a couple of points on them. They have uh, this this dual speed ATC, which is something I've seen. So it means you can basically tool change either fast or slow, depending on 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 what part you're doing. You know, sometimes you might have heavier tools. Sometimes you might not need to chase cycle times. So therefore, you can adapt kind of the, the performance of the machine in accordance with the part that you're manufacturing. They're always seen the Huachon machines to have FANUC controls. In this instance, at the event, they're going to have Siemens on their machine as well, which is um, important for people that obviously use uh, Siemens controls. And that will be on a on a high tech 650. So uh, we've seen a lot of the Huachon lathes. They go from the very small QTEX up to the huge 850 oil country machines. And that just shows, I think, for any manufacturer that wants to have a machine shop where they don't necessarily want to have to go to lots of different providers of machines with watch on, there is pretty much a machine for, for every need, even their five axis, they'll have the D two and the D three, there, big mold making machines. And again, with a Siemens control on a five axis, um, vertical lathes as well. So they have something, and I know we've said it a few times and it's probably something that I've said on these podcasts, more than once, but there is a machine if you go to uh, to Emo on their stand that will be able to satisfy a manufacturing um, requirement. Um, they're 850 machines. They're huge. They're going to have one they of those? They are. I don't think they'll have an 850. I think they go up to a 650 there. Might even have slightly bigger than that, but I don't think they'll have an 850. But still, I mean, you know, they've got 11 machines on the booth, which... 11? Is a lot of kit. That's going to be yeah. a big stand. Yeah, it's going to be a big stand, and, it, and it's an impressive stand, and it's a... You know, they're, 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 they're some of their uh, VMCs that I mentioned, they have the latest 15-inch touchscreen controls, come with box guideways or linears. So, you know, regardless of of what you want a machine, whether it's fast, light cuts or, you know, big heavy-duty machine, you can, you can have that They're privately owned, aren't they? They are privately owned. And like you said, I believe they were the largest privately owned um, machine tool manufacturer in Korea. Their control systems as well, they work very closely with FANUC. They've got some kind of really clever and funky monitoring within their controls, which help manufacturers uh, evaluate tool wear and things like that. So there's lots of unique little features. That it, it, It's a stand that will be big. It will be spacious as they always are because it needs to be with a lot of kit and they'll have everything that I've mentioned there. I'll tell seen. you what as well, the um, the tool change, a lot of people don't think of it because obviously, like you were saying, you can have a big U drill in or a really long drill and you do not want that spinning round yeah, at full exactly. pelt. Yeah. So being it's just these little little features that they factored into in, into the machine like that. that yeah, it, you know. it just it just shows that they're looking after the machine. It's not just the guy who's buying it, which is always nice to know. Yeah, because and they do look nice as well, don't they? They do. Yeah, they do. So like like you were saying earlier, when companies now it's the trade's not like it used to be, where it's just a bit a dingy, dirty machine shop, at, and you wipe your feet on the way out. It's People are a lot more, well, they're, they're looking after the business now. You've got nicely painted floors and, and machines you, just looking aesthetically nice as well. But just, Tom, isn't that also part and parcel of winning big contracts and the fact that, you you know, it's not just about the final result of the end part, but it's having to re reach, uh, forgive me if I get this wrong, but standards in industry to be able to then broach different industries like aerospace that yeah, isn't that all part and parcel of it because you've got to have your and, and isos and everything yeah nine thousand and one. Yeah. i think it is yeah. the aerospace one and they come in and they check your business for everything so yeah. having having a machine with that sort of safety in mind as well because yeah. we know health and safety is becoming a big point now they're trying to push it as much as possible so even the tool change could could go for a big win on health and safety so it's just like you said, it's the little things that are really helping at the end of the day when you're trying to machine these parts. Okay, there you have it. Um, so that is your watch on. Last but by no means least, let's discuss 
Mazak. So Mazak is a leading global manufacturer and distributor of uh, machine tools, laser machines and automation solutions. Uh, they live by being committed to excellence. And from what we know, it looks like they're really trying to focus specifically on the pain points of manufacturers, not just providing, there you go, that's a machine. It's now they're taking a few steps back thinking about what the end result is and kind of working back from there. What are we going to see on the Mazak stand? Yeah, that's that's important because I think it's it's a theme. I think what from from reading and talking to the guys at Mazak, it's very much, like you say, it's not a case of we've developed this machine, come and see it, it's going to be great. It's, it's looking at the pain points that manufacturers have and they've identified a lot of these correctly, which is um, skill shortages, energy costs that we talk about, um, wage inflation. We don't talk about that one here because we don't want people to think that wages inflate. Um, and also, obviously, the, the environmental uh, costs and, thing, and things like that. So they have taken their products and geared what they're showing at the event around around these, um, what people face as problems. And I think that's probably very attractive to somebody going to the event. I mean, whether they're coming from here or the UK or wherever they're coming from, they're going to be looking to go to the show to find something that helps them in their machine shop. And when they need help, it's going to be because they've got, i.e., one of these problems. Um, there'll be no less than 19 machines on their 19? stand. 19? 19 Are machines. Are they just taking up a hall to we, themselves? Uh, we kind of keep going up and up, and, and yet 19 machines that they're actually going to have at the event. Um, some of the ones that I've picked out of... of, of what I've read, uh, the CV500 five-axis machine, very which popular. very popular, built here in the UK, will be there and um, done exceptionally well. I was just about to say, is that, well. do you think that goes along the sustainability that they're actually building machines over here now, not just importing them? I, I, I think, yeah, I think so. But I think what it all said is it gives them the ability to be able to cre to, to use the knowledge and the skill sets that we have and they have here in the UK. Because their machines have become very popular. You, very, we see them all the time Very popular. Now. And it won't just be here in the UK. I mean, they're, they're, they would class them and they, they have. And we said this earlier about another company is an entry level machine. But, you know, that isn't an entry level five axis as far as I'm concerned. No. Uh, they'll also have their QTE range, which is their turning centers, which again, these two machines that I just picked there, are typically great in all regions of manufacturing. You know, your small companies, your your larger OEM businesses, they, you know, turn parts and mill parts, and they are where those um, machines fit perfectly. So there's a big audience, so it should be attractive to those two. But of course, they'll also have their Integrex machines. They'll also have some new uh, products that they're releasing one of which, in fact, this isn't a new release, but this was really interesting. This is the uh, FSW460V, which is a friction welding machine as well as milling. So you're talking about a, a hybrid machine here. And I think I've seen one at a previous show. I think I've, I've seen one. We'll have it running because that is so yeah, great. The it, it friction is, welding is brilliant. It, 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 it is incredible is. to see. And I did have to today to, to go onto YouTube and just have a look at this machine in action. But yeah, for, for the EV industry, um, you know, for... for semiconductors where you need to weld as well as machine it houses it in the tool changer brings it in and you're going to ask me how it works you need to go to emo to see it <laughs> but, the, but but you know this is kind of innovation where people are taking different areas of manufacturing where they need to go to different people with different skills and bringing them onto one machine but that because friction what... welding sorry is is it to save remnant as well, or is it for specific? I know it is for saving, and that's what they use. Yeah, it I mean, for as my well. knowledge of, of the friction welding, for example, if you had, uh, the, there was one example, um, radiator parts where you've got, you, you kind of, you, you almost need to build up areas and then they can be machined as well. But so you've got the ability to basically, let's say, I mean, let's take another example. I don't know whether there's, the, in, in a repair instance, I'm not quite sure on the technology so they will be able to answer it at emo but if you need to to build up then to machine to remachine in order to you know rather than having larger uh, fabrications like larger billets and things like that you can almost send, you can kind of build parts as well as machine them is but i think I like you said the repair thing is a big one because usually you would take that off your machine put it on another machine to be all welded up to then bring it back onto your machine yep. then you have to clock it all up and you have to get it right to do it all on one machine. Exactly. It's a really, it's really, I tell you, very, we, there's a lot of exciting stuff we talk about here, but that will be definitely worth a look. They're, they've also got their Optiplex uh, 3015 Neo laser machine. Now this, I saw this, uh, I went to Mazak Optronics in Chicago and I saw this machine in action there. Um, 
this is all a, a laser cutter. And in, in, in the traditional world, laser cutting is all about the depth of part, the surface finish, and you kind of have to dip, p pick different machines depending on the material, the depth, the finish, and all of those things. With their new um, technology that they offer here, it's called beam shaping. It basically means it doesn't matter how thick or how thin the part is, um, you know, what, what the actual edge quality is, this technology, their beam shaping technology on the Neo machine can actually cut stainless up to 50 millimeters, uh, aluminium up to 50 millimeters as well. So you're talking about a machine that can cut very quickly in small, small plates. Surely that's well going to save people money and space though if you've got one machine that can do all of this instead of exactly, having four exactly. or five this, to do things this is you're gonna... beam shaping technology which has been developed in order to do you know let's compare it to a, a multitasking mill turn machine where you're turning and then milling on different machines bringing it onto one this type of technology is really allowing you to go to market and be able to select whatever material you need and and the control and the uh the capabilities of the nozzles and all of that sort of stuff will make sure that you can cut that material successfully to those depths. Can I just clarify, steel and aluminium at 50 mil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I didn't think they could normally cut such depth this, in this, aluminium. This, yeah, this is, this is aluminium up to 50 millimetres okay. and stainless. And, and I actually saw it. it. It's incredible to see. Yeah, the that's that's going to be massive yeah. because normally by the time... Well, people look at CO2 machines, they look at various other ways of doing it. But, but you but think 50 mil, you'd have thought by the time you're cutting that depth, you've melted the top of the aluminium. So... <laughs> It's changing I, the focus, isn't it? I want to... The technology, yeah. as I understand it. Yeah, I yeah want, it's I all in the... You want to go to the stand. You're to yeah. go to, yeah. I want to, to see this yeah. because I would have thought you would melt the top have before... I sold it to you? Have you I have. I, I, I'm yeah. definitely going to go and have or a look at this. Or is there any more Yeah, there is. And I, and I, and I think there's, a there, there, yeah. there's a good example of what they're showing machine tool-wise out of the 19. Of course, there's lots more. But one of the other interesting points I picked up on is their M2M software, which is machine to Mazak which I can only imagine, and again, you need to explore this more with them, is, uh, well, I know that it's kind of a monitoring software within their control. So we talked about digital twins earlier, and we talk about companies trying to be more efficient with their machining. We talk about third-party products, which you can add to machine tool supplies as product to give you some of this feedback, some of these results, um, maintenance, the, you know, maintenance issues and all the rest of it. This particular piece of software i believe is actually fully integrated into their control and basically means you can do a lot of the things that you might have from third parties now by being able to be more efficient reduce cycle times monitor tool wear all of those things on the machine even on some of the the, the you know let's say the entry level machines so they're kind of bringing everything into um into one place and then you have their eye connect software as well which they'll be talking a lot in detail about which enables you to um, you know, for connectivity reasons to be able to communicate with the manufacturer and get the best out of your technology. And I'm sorry not to upset any third party suppliers, but surely if Mazak have designed this for their machines, it's going to work through the whole range instead of you going and getting a third party software that's been designed to go over four different suppliers. So you might get three out of the five options, four out of the five. You, you'd think the Mazak one will be integrated, so you'll get it'll just work. Yeah, you 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 you. You take a machine tool these days, all the things we talk about, the pain points that they have identified that people have, this type of software in conjunction with their hardware and their machine will give operators and purchasers the opportunity to resolve the, the, the problems that we've had. So right. Stand with 19 us machines, all with all of this technology on that we've just spoken about. It is definitely, definitely worth visiting the Mazak stand at Emo. Right. I'm excited. Are you all excited about Emo? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And and for those that have been interested in, in all the podcasts that we've done, I think it's important to say it is it's very easy to get to as a show. Hanover in, in Germany, you know, we're flying there's a few locations around Bremen we're flying into, which is an hour's drive south. Right, for some flying, there's, isn't it? The, the, yeah, there's a boat, you're going on a boat across. <laughs> I mean it's what is it, two hours from the from the or three hours from the Four hours, five hours. Keep going. It's a long, long drive. It depends who you're in the van with, but <laughs> yeah. that's all I'm going to say. But accessibility from around Europe as absolutely. well. It's e you know easy to get to. But that's because we've got a kit. Because we've got five crews going out there to film and all these stands. Yeah, we're going to be super excited, but super how many, busy. How many stands? What did you say? Oh, sorry, 27? no, five. We're, we've got five teams. I don't know how many stands yeah. we're filming. Twenty-seven, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> over forty, I think, isn't it? Is it? It is. Yeah.
From the 18th to the 23rd of September, MTD will be at Emo 2023 in Hanover. So what are you waiting for? Get in touch, get ready, and get excited about Emo.